Now, a 22-year-old student pays the ultimate price for salvation. The All Nations University student died after falling from the fourth floor of a building. Apparently, she was being delivered from evil spirits. Sad, we'll tell you more shortly. Ghana is 58 years tomorrow. The country is grown, or is it? What do we have to celebrate 58 years after independence? Definitely not demonstrations. Interior Minister Mark Woyongo has asked Ghanaians to find more innovative ways of getting their grievances addressed. The demos are too many, he says. And remember Martha Bisa? She's a 17-year-old who won us our one and only gold medal at the Junior Olympics in China last year. Well, apparently, she rejected a sports scholarship to study in the United States. It's going to be an interesting half hour. My name is Ifwa Kwa Harrison. This is JN Interactive. I'll be right back. Join us via all our social media platforms. We are facebook.com forward slash join news on TV. You can also find us on Twitter at join news on TV or at JN Interactive GH. Alternatively, you can send us an email. It's join news. I am at multitvworld.com or send your messages via WhatsApp. The number is 0540109009. We shall rebroadcast, retweet, share your thoughts with the rest of the world. We start from the All Nations University in the Eastern region where a student has died after falling from a story building in the school. 22-year-old Benedicta Nana Esi Edu fell from the fourth floor of one of the school's buildings during a deliverance session. Eastern Regional Correspondent Kofi Sian joins us over the phone lines with some more on this. Welcome to GN Interactive, Kofi. Good evening. Good evening. Now, Kofi, what exactly happened? This was during a deliverance session at the school? Yes, that is the information we taken from the grounds. Mm -hmm. Even though the school authorities have refused to speak to the issue, uh, because we expected earlier that they, they tell us exactly what happened uh, yesterday in the evening. But uh, after now, and as I speak, they been unable to come out to as to what actually happened yesterday in the evening. So you don't have details of how this thing came to be on the fourth floor, nothing like not, that? Not uh, from the school authorities, but, but what, mm -hmm. what the have you gathered? investigations I have done personally. Okay. From uh, speaking to some of the students and speaking to a few of the lecturers there. They tell me yesterday uh, there were some associations which the girl has been part for some time now and they were doing their normal uh, prayer at the top of the school building and unfortunately the girl fell from that part of the building and died instantly. Okay, and we understand that even students do not want to speak on record about the issue. Is this yes, true? Yes, the school authorities uh, according to my sources, I told students and lecturers not to speak to anybody uh, about the issue. They are saying that they fear they will be victimized uh, if they speak to the media. So, as it stands now, nobody, being a lecturer or a student, has been able to speak to uh, us about the issue. What about the police? What are they saying about this? Well, the district police commander, uh, New Derby, uh, Superintendent uh, Richardson Kumeko confirmed the incident to me. He said uh, they've done their primary investigations and they revealed that the girl and some other persons were having uh, prayer time at the top floor of the building. And uh, actually, they cannot tell what happened to the girl, but uh, all the information that they have now is that the girl, from, the girl fell from the top and she died. Okay, and we understand the Eastern Regional Minister was also at the school earlier today? Yes, uh, the Regional Minister, Mshibu Siakuseche, was there to sympathize with 
the students and uh, the school authorities and the family. Mm. And when the regional minister came out of the meeting, you know the school has been able, has not, has not come out to tell the media as to what happened, but the regional minister in an interview with the media said, uh, you know, according to him, the school authorities said uh, they were having some choir practice at that end of the building. So it, it's quite some conflicting reports we're receiving. The police tells us that they were having deliverance service or prayer time at the top. Mm. And the regional minister is also telling us the school Something authorities else. that uh, they, they, they were doing some choir practice at the top there. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be looking forward to having a clearer picture of this issue in updates and subsequent bulletins. Let's go on to Facebook. We shared the story on Facebook. That was our Eastern Regional Correspondent, Kofi Xiao, updating us about the 22-year-old girl who fell from the fourth floor of a building at the All Nations University in the Eastern Region. We shared the story on Facebook. A lot of you are uh, saying it is too bad and a sad story and you are sending your condolences a lot of a lot of rips on facebook paul adombo sergio says hmm, this is so sad may her soul rest in peace a lot of you saying that i man says way deliverance that she could have been my future wife <laughs> so that's from Ayman. Kenneth, faithful Ayamga has more questions. Was the deliverance taking place at her balcony? And can the pastor tell us whether the evil spirits died along with her or not? It hurts me when I read about young, productive citizens dying because of someone's foolish actions. Well, Kenneth, the details are not too clear right now. So hopefully we'll have some more clarity later on. In Francis Eshen says, what in this age and time, why do we subject ourselves to such things? Call Me Maga says, it's not her fault she fell. These so-called pastors push their members sometimes to show that they have power, but nothing. Alas, and Fuseni Dana says, so sad, we are all to to fall victims to death like she has been caught by the trap, very youth like this may her soul rest in endless peace and we those who are left behind may we die in a state of being true believers Muhammad Mawan says all the congregation ought to be arrested Yaku Dasani says let's change for the better by the way it's very sad senior abroad says what a shock Enum Eric deliverance on the fourth floor why Please check the pastor very well and let him explain to us with diagrams for us to understand why it happened so. So these are your comments coming through via Facebook. Now, 17-year-old Ghanaian Olympic gold medalist Martha Bisa has reportedly rejected a sports scholarship to the United States. The president announced her scholarship in his State of the Nation address. Now, I spoke with my colleague Rashida Baba Tando earlier to get the details. All right, Baba, welcome. Thanks. So tell us, what is this about Martha Bisa uh, rejecting a scholarship to the United States, a sports scholarship? Okay, truth is, I'm not sure that Martha has actually rejected the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you a little background to this whole thing. Remember that she went to Nianjing in China where she yeah. won the 800 meter world championship Mm -hmm. uh, so she got a gold medal. So when she came back to Ghana, um, she went together with her mother and a few other people to see President Muhammad to present the medal to him. Mm. Uh, after which she was given $10,000 by the President of Ghana. Um, but it is alleged that the President or the Chairman of the Ghana Athletics Association, Francis Dodu, Professor Francis Dodu, actually asked that um, that money be donated into a fund, into the Ghana Athletics Federation Fund, mm. um, for, I mean, developmental purposes, for training purposes, and all of that. But Martha's mom stood her ground and said no. She agreed to the fact that the money was given to Martha Bisa and not to the uh, Federation. So if they wanted money for the Federation, it wasn't Martha's money that was supposed to be given yeah, to her. Yeah, because it was her prize money, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So I'm sure that um, 
I, I mean, let's let's put everything down there. Let's let's put all our hearts there on the table. I'm sure there was a little bit of friction between Martha, Martha's mom, uh, for which reason Ghana. Martha has been roped in, and the Ghana Athletics Association. Now coming back to this scholarship issue, um, just uh, last week, late last week, we we got wind of the fact that Martha had stopped training with her coach, and she has she had moved into. Um, a purported new manager's residence, and this new manager is uh, Miki Osebeku. We know him as uh, Master Richard. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's Master's new manager. That's so they say that uh, he says he wants to manage Martha, and so Martha, truthfully, has actually moved in uh, into his house, and so that's where she's living. And um, again, we called her on the, on on the Joy Sports Center this morning, and what she said was that okay, um, it's not like she doesn't want a scholarship anymore, uh, but she asked for time from the Ghana Athletics Association to think about the scholarship deal and to see if she was going to be positive or not about it. Mm. And her response to us was. No, I didn't say I don't want it, but the Ghana Athletics Association has not gotten back to me. I was expecting them to call me and ask if I was done oh, wow. thinking about it. Uh, for which wow. reason, she says, okay, they haven't called me, so I'm waiting. If they call me, then we'll see. But as whether she still wants to go to the USA, I understand that um, three schools are actually chasing after her. So as whether she's going, she still wants to go to the USA or not, uh, she hasn't established that fact. But what she has established is the fact that she's waiting for the Ghana Athletics Association mm. to get back to her to ask her if indeed she's done thinking to about get back it to her or not. Yes, well, give this girl some advice. What do you think she should do? I think she deserves slaps. Wow, <laughs> yes, I mean, she deserves some slaps to wake up. Maybe she's still in a slumber or something. Um, I don't know, but we definitely know that opportunities abound in the United States if she does go um, yes, for the scholarship. Exactly. She's going to develop into a better athlete. Mm -hmm. um, Probably this will not be her one and only goal she would win for Ghana. She would go on to win more. I'm sure she needs somebody to talk to her. Remember that Martha mm. is just an is SHS um, lever. Mm. Um, I'm sure she's still a bit... Uh, but why, why do you think she would be apprehensive about taking this opportunity? I was coming to that fact. I think that um, this is youthful exuberance. Uh, she's a bit juvenile and so she cannot get her thoughts together. And she will need the right people to talk to her. Her to advise her to, to work on her psychologically for her to understand that look this is the opportunity ahead of you if you grab this scholarship um, uh, thing quickly yeah. so that you go she was actually supposed to live uh, leave early this year we are already in March and uh, she's still waiting for the call Wow and what's she doing now do you know well, she has moved into her new manager's house, uh, that's Miki Osebeko's house. Um, I'm told by the coach that uh, her training regime has even changed, her regiment has even changed, which means that... Uh, and she's training she's for... down on her training. Well, as an athlete, you always have to train. I mean, you, you have to be on your toes because you yeah. don't know when the next competition is. Even okay. if you know, you still have to train towards okay. it. So, um, for now, if you ask me, I know she's only training, if that is true, according to her. All right. But otherwise... Nothing else. Thank you very much, Baba Tando, for that update on Martha Bisa. So I was speaking with my colleague Elia Rashida Baba Tando, updating us on what Martha Bisa has decided to do with her future. Apparently she has rejected a sports scholarship to study in the United States. It was posted earlier today on facebook.com forward slash joy99.7. The question was posed whether it was time for Ghana to take charge of the future of Martha Bisa before her career is destroyed. Nana Kwabna Yeboa said she won't take any scholarship from the state. Other countries will treat her better. Ghana sports is about black stars. Why waste your time here? And Millicent Ikea Boatima Lampard says it's about time the country takes charge of her. And Adam Medical says the earlier the better. Catch and groom them young and they will be fruitful forever. So those are comments on this issue. Moving on, Interior Minister Mark Woyongo says the demonstrations are too many. He says it is putting the country in a bad light. Let's listen to him. Imagine the number of policemen we deploy 
to shepherd those demonstrations is huge. We waste a lot of man hours, resources. Resources, let me say resources. Look at the vehicles, you know, the human resources. And I think that, you know, we need to find ways, innovative ways of registering our protests. You heard the Interior Minister, Mark Woyongo, telling us about how resource-wasting demonstrations are being to the country. Well, what do you think about his comments? We've been to the streets. Uh, it's necessary, but I don't think that will help much because uh, it's a waste of time. But you have to leave your work and then follow the masses of people. And how would it end you? What will you gain? If you want someone to hear you, there are so many ways in doing it. So I don't think um, spending much time leaving your work is, is, is necessary. It's becoming very, very too much, more than how it's used. But the more we do, it's not the more they see to it. But we too, we are doing our best for everything in our custody to everything to move on very well. But it seems like when we do it, it's like they don't care about it. Too much. This year demonstration is very, very too much. I've never seen some before. I've never seen some before. Demonstration is too, very too much. But I don't know the reason why. I don't know the reason why. Whether the uh, economy ran fast or I don't know. If you ask me the, the demonstration, it's less. We need to do more. If it's what I mean, if I want them to do every day, every day, not one day, every day, so that the government itself, he himself, carry himself out. They should, they should go ahead and do more because there was nothing good is going on in the country. You see, you see, they are, they are collapsing everything. They are, they are, they are, they are, dis they are disturbing people mentally. If you are doing business, this, they do so, do so. Right now, they've given uh, the president a new name. Do so, name. What we need here in Accra is a good leader, someone to stand up and uh, like Yasantua. Those are your views from the streets. I have more of your views on social media right after this. Welcome back to GN Interactive. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison. If you're just joining us, well, we've been telling you quite a number of stuff. We've talked about a 22-year-old who apparently fell from a fourth floor building at the All Nations University in the Eastern Region. We did something on that. We also brought you the story of 17-year-old Olympic gold medalist Martha Bisa, who has apparently rejected a sports scholarship to study in the USA. And then finally, we spoke about demonstrations. Minister of Interior Mark Oyongo says the demonstrations are too many and are wasting some of the country's essential resources. Uh, we took some of your comments from the streets. I would now like to take your comments on Facebook. We posted it up. Demonstrations have become too much. What have we achieved with all these demonstrations? What could be the alternatives? And Brakojo Usu Apia says, then we will start throwing stones to the Flagstaff House till the right thing is done. Ahasan Musa says they should fix the mess. Uh, uh, Kofi Jr. says nothing, they just disturb public peace, so you don't think demonstrations are necessary. And Junior Labs Camry says, I beg his pardon, it's not as if demonstrations are anything illegal or wrong, but on the contrary, it's enshrined in the Constitution, so it's legal tender. On the issue of whether it has made any effect or achieved results, in my view, I think it is a yes because in the last Wombo demonstration, the president is reported to have said that the demo had made him sit up. Something like that, if I am right. Yes, Junior Loves Camry, you are right. Well, 
Brace for more demonstrations. Pressure group, the concerned citizens of Ghana, have announced they will be going ahead with their planned protest tomorrow, 6th March. Now, the Accra Regional Police Command got a restraining order from the High Court against the group, but the concerned citizens are planning the protest. Okay, in some form or the other, they might not be on the streets, but they are going to register their displeasure somehow. Now, Ghana turns 58 years tomorrow. That's quite a milestone. 6th of March is a day many Ghanaians look forward to. Or do they? We've been finding out. This is the Independence Square, the venue for the celebration of Ghana's 58 years anniversary. Now, tomorrow, a lot of people will gather here to join in the celebration, including the security agencies, students, pupils, and dignitaries, both local and international. Well, but one thing has been brought in my mind, though, and that is, what has Ghana got to show for in its 58 years of existence? That is the question I will be asking some of you, the general public, to tell me your opinion. Join me to town as we speak to some of them. Ghana is 58 years old, and do we really have something to show for in this 58 years of existence? Well, if you ask me, um, I don't see what there is to celebrate about because uh, uh, our performance so far has been very mediocre. There's nothing that we have really done that should make us be joyful and uh, for that matter say that it is time for us to eat food and drink. I mean, I mean, it's a waste of time, it's a waste of money and so many other things because uh, when you achieve something that is when you can, you can make noise about it and you can celebrate. But if you look at the state of the economy and the attitude towards work, the attitude of government towards, I mean, the, the, the plight of the people and so many other things, I don't see what one has to celebrate about. So if one should take money out of the coffers of a country and say we are celebrating, then I think uh, we should look at it again. Yes. My name is Uncle Jerry. Yes. You are welcome. Yes, I would say we have uh, so many things to show for it. Uh, one might say development is very slow, but at least there is some form of development. Talk about electricity. Those were the comments from the street. We posed the same question on Facebook. What has Ghana achieved over the past 58 years? Mohammed Navy Boy says debt and failure. Prince Kwashiga Young says peace and freedom. Senai Kote says we have discovered Fufu, Joy Daddy Bitters and Co. Julius Rocky says we have achieved mismanagement all over. Nana Oseku for Brefor says doom saw dead Sikadie Basa. So those are some of your comments coming through on Facebook. Let's go over to Lord Edu Asari for what's trending. Now the incident that happened at the All Nations University is trending on social media. Let's go to Twitter and see the reactions of people out there. The first tweet is from Kweku Entribosiakon. He says, All Nation student falls to death during deliverance. Being delivered of evil spirits but not death? Hashtag sad. Here's another from Mamiya Odei. Oh, like seriously? She's a Nigerian, I guess. There's another from Ekua. Just reading about the student who fell to her death at All Nations Uni. And I'm trying not to tweet in all caps. What the entire heck? Next is from Manchetaki. Apparently seems like the, in quote, Holy Ghost was in control, so the lady jumped off the building and fell into a truck, died on the spot. Here's another one from Ekua. Care the activities of these cults on our campuses. Restrict, regulate, and monitor. This foolishness is killing people now. Yes, we heard it all. Those are the thoughts of people on this issue. Very sad incident there, but I mean, well, over to you, Ekua. This has been worse trending. I am Lord Harisid Wasari. Her soul rest in perfect peace. Let's move on to our video of the day, which is inspired by a story you can catch on Join News Prime at 8 today. The Wenchi Divisional Police Command have burned dozens of bags of leaves suspected to be wee 
Some of these narcotics have been in their custody since 1998. Now, video of the day reflects how potent this exercise could be. <laughs> Steve, let's take a picture of the day before we discuss that. Show you the picture of the day. And this is a Nigerian governor who is plating her for, apparently plating her for votes. Oh. So he went door to door, you know, greeting his constituents. And I guess he, he met one of them braiding her and then he mm. decided to braid her. But our video of the day, <laughs> if you didn't get it, the, the, it's a BBC reporter, okay? And he was reporting about the burning of yeah, I think hashish and other narcotics and got high. That's an Irish accent. It yes. Was burning behind me. It's a uh, tongue, eight tons of hashish. <laughs> and then just started was bursting high. into <laughs> laughter because he's yeah. high. So that's how we wrap up that's on high. today's big story and Jen Interactive for today. My name is Stephen. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison. Enjoy, Enjoy the rest of the Good night. Mm -hmm.